So there are people who desperately want to listen to music that is behind a film. And it acts so much as the heartbeat for what is going under. We're this emotional undercurrent that runs throughout the film. And that's true whether you've got a thousand bucks or a hundred million bucks. It makes no difference. That heartbeat approach, which is what we have to do as musicians. Both of you also have experience with smaller uh, indie films. Um, can you make like a small comparison between how the music is being promoted for a, a film within Warner structure, for instance, and then another, an entirely different film? Uh, me? <laughs> I'm trying to think. The, the, the thing about unlimited funds and unlimited budgets is also that you have the massive limitations of the organization that is behind the unlimited funds and unlimited budgets. <laughs> and also the fact that, for instance, on Avatar, not a frame is allowed to come out before the release. One of the things you can do on a smaller project is you can start to feed things earlier, you can start to do marketing so that you allow people to feel something where you can, and this is where the, the fact that we now have uh, access to online systems for, for very little money, you can now seed those things out early in a way that you can't. You know, the, what happens when we're working with Disney or with Warners or whatever is that there is this control. Now I'm hoping that on Avatar 3 that I will get, since we now know what Avatar 2 looked like, one of the big problems was that you know, Jim didn't want to have anything come out in advance. So December the 12th, I think, is the first time anybody could hear anything. Um, And we had music ready months, you know, I'd been working on that for years and, but that's not the point. The point is you need that surprise with Max as well. You need to have that sudden impact that happens on a global basis. And that's the difference on a small film. You can make a huge difference by seeding things early on and by allowing the audience to start to interact. Because we, it's interesting, on the Avatar score, I think I'm, like 700 million streams of this score. So there are people who desperately want to listen to music that is behind a film. And it acts so much as the heartbeat for what is going under. We're this emotional undercurrent that runs throughout the film. And that's true whether you've got a thousand bucks or a hundred million bucks. It makes no difference. That heartbeat approach, which is what we have to do as musicians, is the same. And the fact that you can now put things out on Spotify and Apple Music and Tidal and actually allow people to listen to things and also give them, as Tom was saying, we can give access to uh, elements of our score in a way that for small movies, that's something that is a much more guerrilla way of working. And I think it really can be really useful and really uh, people who have less budgets can make so much more of the music because the music provides this connection and people forget sometimes how much of a connection that can be. But I also mean outside of a financial structure, for instance, do you have the idea that for a smaller indie film you're as much supported? Uh, I, when you describe like releasing um, a track in advance, that's, that's really coming from you, I assume. It's, it's not that... I, I suspect that what happens is that when we're dealing on smaller films, the music... We have much more control, not only that, we have much more responsibility in terms of handling things because we, they're, they're often these are people, they're, they're so busy just trying to get the film finished, get the film out. The fact that we can support them by giving them extra, um, extra uh, musical input in terms of marketing it through the access that we have, uh, that's something that you can approach on on a, on a micro-budget film as much as you can on a mega-budget. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Um, when going back to Warner, Barbie, um, it reminds me of awards campaigning, obviously, Ray, which you know very well. Um, is there any... Um, for instance, when we talk about uh, original songs, um, would you say... yeah? I, 
it obviously helps promoting the film. Um, can you give a little insight on, for instance, Barbie, on how that was approached um, by Warner, but also by uh, the label? Yeah. Okay, so ev even before Barbie, yeah, I, I want to go back to something. Back in the 60s and 70s, studios, months before the movie came out, would, re would release a song. Like for all the Bond movies, the, the song... You know, Goldfinger would come out, you know, months, a month or two before the movie, and that would get people excited about it. And Moon River for Breakfast at Tiffany's. What's that? All right, I'll talk this. Can you hear me now? All right, I'll put it right here. All right, so, so as I was saying, so a month or two before the movie would come out, Moon River would be released for Breakfast at Tiffany's, for Bond movies, you know, and and that was the standard. And then for a little while, it, it wasn't as much, or there were so, all the studios got so caught up in doing it at exactly the same time. But the opposite could happen too. I was working a little song called Can't Stop the Feeling with Justin Timberlake and Max Martin. And, and that song came out almost six months before the movie came out. And then the, and then the, the narrative had to be reminding people, it's for the movie. Smurfs. Uh, so, so it, we we had to just really push that in because you know we we wanted to let people keep that in people's mind. So, so that's one thing. You know, in terms of an awards campaign, you always have to consider that. And then, as part of the marketing of the Barbie movie, the biggest thing was it wasn't the Billie Eilish song to market it. It was the Dua Lipa song. Yeah. The dance song was the one that got people excited to see the movie, and that was it. That was the one, you know, the Billie Eilish song, the first time you'd hear it, you cried. It was just, you know, such a beautiful, heartwarming song. And and then the same way with when the movie was coming out, the Ken song. So so it, it was, that was the impetus of, of it for, for Barbie. And, and, um, and the same way that the Billie Eilish song was promoted as the heart of the film, and that was the president of the of the Can Can Film Festival this year, her, um, the director of the film, um, that was, she, she wanted that, that song to be the heart of the film, and, the, and it was perfectly written for that. So, um, I don't know what was the question, was that, did I get to it, sorry. <laughs> no, maybe, could you maybe say or elaborate on how music-related awards, Oscars, but also World Soundtrack Awards, uh, Hollywood and Music, uh, how they can contribute to the overall PR campaign of the film. So I, I I I've learned through the years to treat awards campaigns like presidential campaigns. Like I'm a campaign manager is kind of what my job is, and there's these all smaller awards and and festivals that have awards that that have songs and scores as categories and um, and so we work with with the Golden Globes. We work on on making sure everything qualifies there, and I have a relationship with all those members. And also, there's the Hollywood Music and Media Awards, which is which is a smaller award show, but it's in November, r before any of the other award shows. And and they have categories for Best Dramatic Score, Best Song. Both of them have won Hollywood Music and Media Awards. Um, and then that sets, the, that sets the stage for the World Soundtrack Awards, and also for the a society of composers and lyricists, which is the nearest thing that composers have to a guild, or um, and and it's also all this stuff is getting in front of the voters. So it's very specific because all the people who follow those awards are also members of the music branch of the academy. So it's gearing towards things on on a very basic level. These are the voters. These are the constituents. So. And, and so it's very important to get out to them and then use that to, to propel more of the media buzz to the trade press and all that. So, so yeah, that's a very important element of it.